Good day, Carlos Sands here. Cheers, I'm having a good day. Um, not pineapple flavoured this week. Uh, Learned my lesson there. I can still taste that uh, that horror. Uh, new Green Left Weekly has come out, just off the off the print, off the from the printer. And uh, one of the things you'll notice uh, is all of our issues this year say at the top, celebrating 25 years. That's uh, that's 25 years we've been going, uh, getting the stories out. Uh, that you won't hear anywhere else about struggles of ordinary people against corporate injustice. Uh, and I think it's worth noting that we simply would not have been able to get so many of these, these papers out and, and survived as long as we have and been as successful as we have without the, the ongoing constant promotion uh, by the likes of uh, Jared Henderson and the folk at The Australian. Uh, who've, whose constant stream of references to Green Left Weekly as a symbol of everything they despise has been uh, an endless source of inspiration and publicity, free publicity for us. So we have to thank, uh, we have to thank the Murdoch Press for that. Uh, and in fact, the latest example was in the the Australian just uh, yesterday. In fact, they, they they ran a piece that referred to a Green Left Weekly article from the year 2000 that was quoting the now Greens candidate for Grandler, Jim Casey. Uh, yeah, they've actually dredged up an article of ours from 16 years ago. That, that makes me think that uh, the, the Australians also noted that it's our 25th anniversary this year and they're replaying some of our greatest hits, which is really very thoughtful of them. Uh, and the article quoted Casey, Jim Casey, slamming capitalist inequality, uh, and the Australian was highlighting that to show uh, what a, a mad, extremist, out-of-touch loon uh, Casey uh, actually is. And fair enough. Uh, fair enough. I mean, I can't, I can't think of any example in, in any major country in the world where, where you know, a politician can expect to win votes by opposing uh, capitalist inequality. Uh, by speaking out against the injustices caused by the capitalist system uh, and in doing so cause a huge groundswell uh, and sweeping uh, the, the headlines and sweeping mass meetings and, and generating huge excitement from the young generation. I can't think of a single example of that anywhere in the, in the world right now. Uh, the, the Australian is spot on there uh, to highlight that, that problem Casey's, Casey's got. Uh, and of course, that just, it's not just them. They're, they're just following the footsteps of... Uh, Labor's MP for Grandler, Anthony Mad DJ Albanese. Uh, he, of course, got in first us to, to slam Jim Casey as a supporter of international socialism, pointing to his previous membership of the International Socialists and his presence at anti-capitalist rallies. Uh, and I thought it was actually a very important, very, very important thing, actually, to, because it showed me, for one, that Tony Abbott's not the only federal politician who's stuck in the 1950s. So it's quite instructive in, the, in that sense. Um, and again, I think Al Albanese has a point. Uh, socialism's obvious. I mean, no one's interested in socialism anymore. It's dead, totally dead and buried uh, the, the, uh, the ideology. It's no, nowhere in the world. Well, okay, Latin America, there's mass movement for socialism of the 21st century with several elected governments who've got that as their uh, official uh, stated goal that they're working towards. But obviously, at Latin America, I mean, Latinos are always a bit... Crazy! You couldn't imagine it in a, you know, in the West. You couldn't imagine it in, uh, I don't know, Britain, for example. You couldn't. I mean, imagine a major party in Britain just like electing as its leader, like a proud veteran, open socialist who's got decades of experience fighting capitalist injustice. I mean, it's just un, it's unthinkable. The United States? Could you imagine in the United States when you think about capitalism and all of its all it's done for the U.S. people? I mean, uh, could socialism getting a hearing? I mean, after capitalism. Capitalism's proven so well at providing so, so many houses and such great health care and, and all the civil liberties and the, the, the peace that it's provided and uh, clean drinking water for all American citizens, uh, whether they, be in the, they live in the White House or Flint, Michigan. When you think about that, I mean, you just think anyone who tried to, for example, go into a race to become a presidential candidate in the United States, I mean, if they, if they were to be open socialists... <laughs> They'd be laughed off the stage. I mean, they'd, yeah, they, they get nowhere whatsoever. I mean, that's just, that's just the goal. That's just the goal. Everyone with common sense knows that. Uh, so I think Albanese is absolutely right. He's got his finger right on the pulse. On the pulse there. I mean, sure, 
So, I mean, he's, it, it is 2016, uh, and his rhetoric might sound like it was cribbed from a 1951 speech by Sir Robert Menzies, but no, I think he's, he knows where people's head's at. He's, he's, he's right there. Um, so Green Left Weekly, 25, 25 years. Uh, is our red-green politics, uh, is it still relevant? Well, you can look at the state of the world and you can make your own judgment about that. I'll, I'll just simply say any article that's religiously read by Jared Henderson and the people at The Australian uh, has clearly, clearly got something going for it. Take a, take a leaf out of their book and think about subscribing to Green Left Weekly. Joy day. Being Carlos Sands. See ya.